George Washington's Teeth, written by Deborah Chandra and Madeline Kimura, pictures by Brock Cole. All of his life, George Washington had problems with his teeth and he worked hard to try to save them. This story is based on what really happened to George and his teeth. The Revolutionary War, George hoped would soon be won, but another battle with his teeth had only just begun. George Washington rushed into town. The dentist heard his shout. Hold still, he said, then gave a yank. A rotten tooth popped out. All that night, George tossed and moaned. Another tooth was sore. But at the dawn, he saddled up and galloped off to war. George reached New York as British ships invaded every port. Preparing for a fierce attack, his soldiers built a fort. Inside, he rubbed his swollen gums with soothing oil of myrrh until a centennial cried out, here come the British, sir. Charging on the field, George thought, there's something in my mouth. He spat into his handkerchief, another tooth came out. This can't be happening, George gasped. What if someone should see? If word got out I'm losing teeth, my men would laugh at me. While no one looked, he wrote a note his dentist would receive. Please come, it said. I'll need your help when I get home on leave. Back at home, George lost more teeth till he had only 10. Oh, Martha, dear, George cried. I fear I'll never eat again. She fed him mush and pickled tripe, but when guests came to dine, he sneaked one of his favorite nuts. Then he had only nine. George crossed the icy Delaware with nine teeth in his mouth. In that cold and pitchy dark, two more teeth came out. Snow fell on George at Valley Forge. His blue coat hung in tatters. By then he'd only seven teeth that couldn't even chatter. Yet bravely George let forth his men, coat and pigtail flying. While cannons boomed, he held his jaw and groaned, I think I'm dying. The red coats fled. George won the war. When he returned alive, Martha checked for seven teeth, but counted only five. He hid the evening of her ball, ashamed his friends would see. That night the dentist came again. George lost another three. Poor George had two teeth in his mouth the day the votes came in. The people had a president, but one afraid to grin. A portrait artist came to George. He said, I know a trick. I'll pad your mouth with cotton balls to puff your sunken lips. George stood up to have a look. He fell back on his fanny. It doesn't look like me, he roared. It looks like Martha's granny. He yanked the cotton from his mouth, then gasped, what have I done? The cotton held a rotten tooth. Now George had only one. George still had that tooth the night. A knock came out the door. I brought false teeth, the dentist called. Teeth that won't get sore. George put them in, but when he smiled, spring snapped against his tongue. Out flew those teeth. Ugh, George shrieked. They've knocked out my last one. Oh no, George moaned. I'm toothless. He kept his mouth shut tight. He couldn't sleep. He paced the floor and prayed with all his might. If only I had teeth, thought George. He pondered what to do. Aha, he cried. All my old teeth might help make something new. He searched Mount Vernon's bedchambers, the pantry, parlors, halls, through shelves, desk drawers, and the musty floor of every horse's stall. George found no teeth. Alas, they're gone. A great sob shook his shoulders. Through tears, he peered in one last chest, leaped up and yelled, my molars! 
With plaster and those teeth he found, George poured a sample mold that showed the dentist how to make false teeth George hoped would hold. The dentist took strong hippo tusk and carved a set to size, each tooth secured with screws of gold that lit up George's eyes. Can you guess the story's end? Those new teeth fit just right. And around the ballroom with his friends, George danced all through the night. <laughs>